Hey guys, Sean from Living Seeds, your seed guru. Today we are going to talk about hand pollinating pumpkins. So on Living Seeds Farm we grow thousands of pumpkin plants and we will we'll pan a shot over the pumpkin plants shortly and you'll see that it's just it's just pumpkin plants and squash plants galore. And what we do every evening, so this, uh, this afternoon, it's, a, it's, it's just gone four o'clock. The guys are going through all of the pumpkin plants and what they're doing is they're pegging male and female plants. So over here, we've got two male flowers. You can see that there's yellow on the male flowers. This yellow indicates that the male flower is going to open tomorrow. And what we need to do is we need to find a female flower. So. I'll lift it up over here. He has a female flower. The reason why I know it's female is there's a little pumpkin, or in this case, there's a little squash below it. And all we do is we take a peg and we just peg the female closed. So if you have a look over here, here's the female, here's the female flower. We've pegged the female flower closed. And what that means is that tomorrow morning at about half past four, all of these female flowers actually start to open up. And as soon as the bees start flying, the bees are looking for these female flowers and they will start pollinating. But we want to hand pollinate the, well, in this case, the squash flower. So it's exactly the same to, to hand pollinate pumpkin flowers and squash flowers. Um, and we're going to show you on, on this squash plant tomorrow morning. But before tomorrow morning, let me just tell you a little bit more as to what we do. So. What happens is we have a female of one plant and then we go and find two males of two separate plants so that we are not inbreeding our, our, um, our pumpkin seeds. So these two males came off two separate plants. They bring the males close to the female and they just put the, the male flowers on a leaf so that as the staff walk down, they're able to see where the male flowers are and they know that there's two male flowers over here, there's a female flower. If there's four male flowers, they know there's two female flowers. It's a very simple process. So the important thing when you are hand pollinating is that you need to be able to identify which flower is going to open tomorrow morning. So here's a good example and I'll actually pull this one over here. This is a male flower that's not ready to open. This male flower is ready to open and this male flower will open tomorrow morning. And we call this coloring up. The important thing is that you need to choose a male flower that's going to open. So this male flower, you can see that it's colored up beautifully. So what we will do is we will actually peg it closed and we will always, well I've picked both of them off this, this one plant over here, but we will peg two male plants of two separate flowers. This is the perfect example of a female flower that's going to open tomorrow and you can see that she's colored up absolutely beautifully. So tomorrow morning four o'clock before the sun rises she's going to open. So what we do is this afternoon we close the female so that a bee can't get inside. I don't know if you can hear the bees flying around but it's so awesome just listening to all of these bees. Hey guys, okay, so it's the next morning on Living Seeds Farm. It's just past seven o'clock. It's a nice overcast day, which is really awesome. We've been having an absolutely torrid heat wave. So the job this morning, and most of the plants have already been pollinated, but my staff left these plants so that I can show you guys how we hand pollinate. So it's important that you hand pollinate before 10 o'clock in the morning. The receptivity of the female plants declines after about 10 o'clock. We try and have all of our hand pollinating done before nine o'clock. Um, today was a, was a nice quick day. Most of the hand pollination has been done. Cool, so let us show you the, uh, a step-by-step -step process on how to hand pollinate and how to ensure that your seed remains pure. This flower is a female flower that was not closed last night. We must have missed it. And we were working here yesterday. So I'm gonna strip this female flower for you so we can see exactly what needs to happen. So this is the stigma. The important thing that you need to achieve when you are hand pollinating um, any pumpkin or squash flower is that 
each one of these lobes going around here needs to be completely covered in pollen. And the reason for that, and I'll show you, the reason for that is that these lobes over here, there's five, one, two, three, four, five. And over here, there's one, two, three, four, five. So these lobes on top correspond to the lobes inside the actual pumpkin fruit itself. And if you look very carefully, those light yellow spots, those are the seeds. Well, right now they, they're called ovules, but they will become seeds once they're pollinated by your pollen. To hand pollinate this female flower to ensure seed purity, there's a couple of things you need. The first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a couple of guys. So we have these two males over here. We'll be using these two males to hand pollinate the female. The next thing you need is you need a blossom bag. These are organza bags. Um, and you'll be using this bag to actually cover the female flower once we've done um, our hand pollination. And you'll need a cable tie to actually mark the plant so that we know that this plant has been hand pollinated. Guys, if you found any value in this video, please like and subscribe. You'll be able to get content like this teaching you how to save seed, how to save your own seed for free. So we need to work quite quickly because the minute that we open this flower, um, any bee that's flying past, the bee's going to try and dive into the flower because this plant is dripping with nectar. So you can see there's a couple of bees over here. We'll keep them occupied over there. Let's take our male flower. So what we do is the male needs to be stripped. So we take the male flower and we just remove the petals all the way around and you can see that there's pollen that has dropped off the male anthers. So we strip this like this and I like to hold it in my mouth. I'm gonna, it's going to go off camera now but I like to hold it in my mouth to keep it out of the way. And this male, you can see the difference over here. Very interesting. So you can see this male on the left, on this male over here, hasn't shed pollen. So you can see the pollen hasn't shed. So we only have one male to work with in this instance. So this male, you can see the pollen grains are just ready to, to fall off. So let's move along. Here's our female flower. And all you do is you actually just tear, you tear it open. We don't normally tear it open this much, but for purposes of this video, I'm going to tear it open quite nicely. So now we take the male and every single pollen grain that attaches to the stigma um, has the potential of creating a seed. So you just want to work around and I don't know if you can see that tiny little thrips over there. That is a thrips. So thrips can be a problem. I can hear some bees coming. So what, it's, what we do is take this female, put the female into the organza bag like this, and we just pull the drawstrings to ensure that no bee can cross-pollinate now. Now the most important part is we need to know that this fruit has been hand pollinated. So what we do is we take a cable tie and we put a cable tie around the stem of the plant like this so that when we harvest these these squashes any squash with a cable tie we know that the seed is pure. Any squash that doesn't have a cable tie that is a squash that cannot be used for seed saving. Okay guys so hand pollination done that is the process that we use for hand pollination and this entire field is, is hand pollinated by our staff. Every single seed that is sold by Living Seeds has a minimum of two people that are, are used to actually create the seed and then it goes through a whole harvest process. But let me show you down here, this is a Hubbard squash, this is Golden Hubbard and you can see the cable tie that has been attached to this plant. So we know when it comes to harvest time that this plant has pure seed. What our staff do as they're working through these fields 
if they come across a Hubbard plant that doesn't have a cable tie, the plant is cut, the, the, the fruit is cut off the plant because we don't want the plant putting energy into a Hubbard squash that we can't use the seed. Guys, if you found any value in this video, please like and subscribe. You'll be able to get content like this teaching you how to save seed, how to save your own seed for free.